MG Raw back with you. And today we got ourselves a 1958 Morris Minor 1000 in the shop. Now, for those of you who don't already know, this is the car that basically bore out the Midget and Nelson Healy Sprite. Because they basically took this car, designed a sports car body around these mechanicals, and that became the Austin Healy Bug Eye Sprite, which then later became the Midget. So, yeah, a humble sedan that was actually a low-end car became an iconic sports car in some ways. So the owner of this car originally called me because he had the exhaust leak, which you could tell from, he could hear when I was bringing it in. And he said the front shocks were leaking and there was some rust underneath the car that he was concerned about. He said, he, you know, somebody had, before he bought it, had done the body, but he said they didn't really do some underneath stuff and he wanted to see how bad is it? What can be done with it? You know, what would it cost? Is it dangerous? You know, all that stuff. So we're going to be looking at that. And of course, when I brought it in, you could also tell it wasn't quite running as well as we want it to. So he did say, we're probably going to go ahead and look at that as well. And being that it is an earlier Morse Minor 1000, it has the venerable BMC or Austin A series 948 in it, single carb. Um, it has been updated to an alternator. And interestingly enough, the later 1000s actually had the 1098 in it, but they still called them 1000s, not 1100s. So we'll get this thing up in the air. We'll take a look at his primary concern is how bad actually is the rust and what can be done about it. All right, so we got this thing up in the air now. Now, before we actually start looking at the rust, we're gonna see that it has this brake conversion on it. That's nice to see, which that's actually a pretty easy conversion because you just take the disc brakes off of a later midget. But you can see here, the, obviously somebody couldn't figure out how to just cut these out of the brackets, which all you gotta do is just cut across this, use a nut splitter or something like that, and you can take all that out really easy. So they just put a new bracket on here and zip tied this in there. Not the way I would have done it, but it, I guess it works. Now the front here, we got some problems. Now this isn't from rust. Somebody's cut that. And the other side's actually worse. It's, uh, it's been actually some damage at some point here, maybe from some accident damage at one point. So yeah, that's not too nice. But then this. This is a repair that was done a long time ago. So we got an angle iron here and a piece of flat bar here. Now this flat bar being here is going to actually push out the bottom of this and give this some negative camber. Which negative camber is not necessarily too bad, but you don't want a bunch of negative in this side and nothing in that side. So yeah, you might want to look at that. This side here, while this one was welded on years ago, this is a later repair. And this was just bolted on. And this one does extend a lot further back here because there's rust back in here and up here that isn't in the other side. So that is a bit of a concern. Um, it does weaken the chassis a bit, having that much rust, but this does put a lot of, a lot of strength back into it because this is heavier than the original steel. Now the exhaust leak here, we can notice here, see, it, see how much it moves? But you can also see it's hitting on here, on the chassis. The whole exhaust system is sitting way too low in the car. So it really needs all new hangers put on it to tuck it up a little tighter to the chassis so we can get it to not rub here and sit better on the manifold and we can clamp it so it doesn't move around so much because as long as it's moving around like that, you'll never get it to seal up there as well, because it, you know, hitting there is gonna just keep shocking that, and we wanna keep it from leaking, we'll have to adjust the positioning of it. Now, moving on further back, it looks like 
The rockers on both sides have been reworked, the whole edges of the floors. So it's all been rust repair. And it looks like they just did it with whatever they had laying around. Because uh, this side here, she has a piece of one by one uh, square tubing and then um, some flat plate stuff here, which is a lot heavier than the original stuff. And it's just made to just fit and work, not to look anything like original. And then on the other side, it's got angle iron here instead of the square tubing. And it's made kind of similar to the other side, but still, yeah, not quite like it should be. But it's thick enough to provide strength. Um, just isn't right. Um, moving on further back, I do not like this at all. Once again, just rather than cutting this out of the bracket, they just put a new bracket on. But in this case, instead of putting the bracket right up here, they stuck it way further forward, putting this in constant tension, which is not a good thing. Now, maybe sitting on the ground, there's less tension on it. I'd have to look at it once I get it back down. But yeah, I would like to see that changed. But in order to change this, you got to put a longer piece of brake line on or find some brake line, some excess and pull back this way to get it back further. Moving on further back, the original gas tank is long gone and somebody had made their own tank out of aluminum. Now, as long as it's not leaking and everything, it should be fine. And maybe this is even done like a small, small fuel cell with a bladder in it, which makes it even better than the original. I don't know until we open the boot and take a look. But looking at the back here, there's not nearly as much rust in this area as I would have expected, especially looking at the front chassis legs. So I'm going to say, however, this thing was stored at one point in time. Um, maybe it was stored somewhere where it was partly on gravel, partly in grass, or partly on you know, a, a paved area and partly in gra gravel or grass or something, because the front end definitely shows a lot more rust than the back end does. And I would expect a lot more back in this area here based on the front of the car. In this case, I'm not sure that I would actually advise the owner to put the money into um, replacing all that stuff or not, simply because that's a big job. You can get into quite a bit of labor working on those front chassis legs and trying to make all that actually right. And depending on what his intentions are for the car, how much he has in it, how much he's willing to put in it, and how much he's going to actually plan on using it, I uh, might advise him just to leave well enough alone and just enjoy the car if he doesn't plan on using it much. 